Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, our Bible verse of the week from James chapter 2. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Here ends the text. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we give thanks that you've brought us together into this family, into this fellowship of believers by grace through faith. We give thanks this was a complete gift of yours, that we had no contribution, but you simply loved us and chose us. We pray, Lord, that you might help us to live out that calling, to show forth in our life daily the works that result from our faith, that others may know you, believe and be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. So faith, a work in progress, is our title of the sermon today. It's something God has given us to be used. So this past week was the start of school here at Peace Lutheran, as well as in the Anago School District. Um, So we give thanks to God for the uh, 190 or so voices that entered the building. You know, we always have voices in here of young children because of our child care center that operates 12 months of the year. But having the, the extra voices, the kids and the teachers coming, is a true blessing that we have here at Peace Lutheran, and we give thanks to God for that blessing. So we just completed that first uh, week back at school, and it reminds me that God has given us a very special gift to be used, and that gift is our mind, our brain. You know, wouldn't it be great, and I thought about this because of having, you know, our latest grandchild born here in the last month, you know, wouldn't it be great that if we were born, when we're born into this world, that God would just implant into our mind everything we would need to know to live out a good life for the rest of our life here on this earth. You know, that he would just give us all knowledge, all wisdom, all understanding to really make good decisions in life, to know what we need to know. Like, you know, if you just put in calculus right into our brain right away, or maybe, uh, you know, social studies, whatever our subjects might be. But God didn't design us that way, did he? You know, he gave us kind of the the raw tool, the brain, the mind, and then he's given us the ability to fill it, to use it, to exercise it. And so in order to be a successful student here at Peace Lutheran School or any other school, you got to use your mind, right? You got to use the gift that God has given you and apply it. And so kids actually, in order to learn, have to do work. Yeah. I think when I was a child, you know, when I was a student going to school, and especially elementary school, it took me a few years to figure that out. <laughs> Maybe it did for you too, right? That like, oh, I have to actually use this thing. You know, it's not just going to be stuck in there. And so that's the way learning works. We learn by putting our mind to good use, doing the work. Same is true, by the way, for the human heart. You've been given one of these or our other muscles in our body. You've probably heard this over and over again that, well, you need to exercise. Anybody ever hear that in your life? Yeah. You need to exercise regularly. You need to keep your body in shape. You need, you know, God has given us this body not to just sit, but to actually use. So there's interesting studies that have been done about all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, if we, uh, if we don't exercise our mind, if we don't exercise our body, well, then it's going to not be used to its full potential. Well, I don't know if you've applied those concepts to this, though. You know, I think we've all heard that about our mind, uh, even especially as we get older, you know, we have to do, keep exercising your mind as you get older, puzzles, and and, uh, continue to be engaged in, in doing activities. But the same is true of our faith. You know, faith by, uh, Uh, the definition within, you know, God's Word is something that God has given us already. We know from infancy God has supplied His Holy Spirit through the Word and sacrament in our baptism to give us this great gift of faith, saving faith in Jesus Christ. And we know if we're good Lutherans that God has done all the work, right? Jesus did everything necessary to save us. Jesus lived the perfect life underneath God's law, obedience to the Ten Commandments perfectly because we can't do that perfectly. 
Jesus is the one who went through complete suffering for our sin and the sin of the whole world, for all people, when he went through the cross and gave his life there and bled and died for us. And Jesus defeated death in the grave. Jesus is the one who showed the power over death by rising from the dead on the third day on Easter morning. He did it. Not us. He did it. But he gives that victory to us for free. It all comes by grace through faith. How many times have we heard that phrase, right? As good Lutherans, this is just part of our identity. But sometimes I think we don't quite get to the next part of what it means to have faith, which is just kind of like our mind and our heart. God's given it to us to use, to put into practice, to exercise. And so that's what we're going to be doing and talking about really for the next six weeks here at Peace Lutheran. We're doing this thing called the Bean Challenge, Bean Challenge, if you saw our creative video that we did here last weekend and showed you in church. Um, yeah, it's the, the Bean Challenge. It, it means being closer to God. And you might wonder, well, why are we doing this, Pastor Dave? What's this thing all about? Well, there's this pastor. His name is Zach Zender. His name is on the book there. He's the one who wrote this. He's an LCMS pastor, and he was a pastor down in Florida and had a mission church down there near Orlando. And he had a man, his name is Derek, who uh, came to church with his wife, except Derek wasn't a Christian, and he wasn't a member of the church, obviously, if he's not a Christian, right? He never was baptized. And he kept coming, and he kept coming, and one day he said, you know what, I'm going to take that step and go to the new member classes. And so that's what Derek did. And by the way, today we're starting a new set of new member classes right here at Peace Lutheran after this service at 9.15 to 10.15 in the conference room. I'll be teaching it. Just look for me if you're interested. But anyway, Derek, after attending for quite a while, because sometimes it takes quite a while, he finally took the step and said, I'm going to go to the class. So he went through the classes. He learned about this great gift of God's grace that comes in and through Jesus Christ. And he made the decision that he wanted to be baptized at the end and join the church. The Holy Spirit motivated him to receive that gift. And so he was. He was baptized. He was brought into the church. His family was so excited. His wife was so excited. You know, and he was excited. But about a week later... He came to Pastor Zach here at this church in Orlando area, and he said, you know, Pastor, I don't really feel any different than I did before. So what's it supposed to look like or feel like to be a Christian, <laughs> to live out my faith? And that kind of got Pastor Zender here going on digging into the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the story of the life of Jesus, to see how did Jesus answer that question? How did Jesus live out his life? You know, as the, the supreme example, I guess, of, you know, what does Christian living look like? Now, obviously, he came as a Savior, but he also came as a pattern, an example to all of us as Christians of, well, what does it mean? Once we know and believe this great truth that we have been saved by grace through faith, well, what does it really look like as we live it out? You know, James addresses that in the epistle reading today. He talks about the royal command, love your neighbor as yourself, a summary of the last seven commandments. Or the first three, you know, summarized by love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Or as we're doing in confirmation class, again this Wednesday, uh, just a reminder, again, meal at 5.30, class starts about 6. But we're going through the Ten Commandments, you know. There is an outline of the Christian life. But as Pastor Zender, Pastor Zach here, studied the life of Christ, he saw that there were actually some, some specific targets that Jesus demonstrated in his daily living as he lived out those commandments. And so he wrote this book called The Red Letter Challenge. We actually looked at this uh, four years ago here in this church. Some of you remember this. We started this 40-day, very similar to what we're doing with the Bean Challenge. Uh, it's called the Red Letter Challenge, the Black Book, and we went through 40 days of devotions, and right in the middle, we did this during Lent, by the way, right in the middle, COVID hit, and then all of a sudden, 
We couldn't come to church for a little while. Our small groups kind of ended. <laughs> we still could read the book, though, and we still continued our worship series. But it was just kind of a strange time, right? We kind of had this awkward, weird thing happen in the middle of our 40-day Red Letter Challenge. But in that book, if you read that book, if you went through that challenge four years ago, here at Peace or maybe in some other place, you know, he identified these five targets to shoot for in the Christian life. You know, this is what Jesus did with his life. You know, he spent time with his, his heavenly Father in nurturing that relationship. That's the being part. He also forgave a lot of people. He showed forgiveness. In fact, his whole life ultimately was about forgiveness when he went to the cross, right? And then he also served others, and you see Jesus serving many people in the Gospels, reaching out and helping those in need. And then giving. You know, Jesus obviously gave his life. That was the ultimate gift, right? But he also talked a lot about giving, giving of our money towards God and others, uh, giving of our talents, and, and giving in other ways. I mean, just living a life of self-sacrifice to further the love of God in this world. And then also finally going, you know, the Great Commission, right? Go and make disciples. So Jesus was always kind of on the move, and so is the Christian church. And so Zach wrote about these, these five kind of targets that we live out and it kind of helped explain in kind of a practical way. Well, what does it look like to live out the love of God and to live out the love of our neighbor and to live out the Ten Commandments? Well, it kind of looks like this. So what we're doing starting next weekend is we're zeroing in on the first one, on being, on being in relationship to our God, nurturing our relationship to God using five targets. Yeah, he's into the five target thing, right? So five targets to shoot for, and Pastor Jared's going to share this a little bit more in detail next week in our introduction to this whole program, but <clears throat> things like gathering in community. Well, guess what? That's what Jesus did, right? He gathered 12 disciples, and he had his little community that he nurtured and grew. We have small groups, or we have other map teams and other things here in the church, right? He studied Scripture, Jesus. Okay, Jesus is God, right? He actually wrote the Bible, or sent his spirit to inspire the writers to write the Bible. But he spent time in God's Word. So do we. How do we read the Bible? Learning to uh, prioritize that. Um, and also prioritizing prayer, our, our response to God, our, our conversation with God, seeking solitude, that one-on-one -on -one time with God, not just corporate prayer that we do here, but how do we talk to God and listen to God privately? And then church, okay? God's design for his community of believers is to be together as a congregation, so we're going to talk about that. So those are the targets we're shooting for in this being challenge. And hey, we're not going to do it perfectly, right? None of us have a perfect uh, uh, working out of our Christian faith, but that day at some point in the future will come. Some of you should recognize this picture I've got on the screen. Anybody know what street this is? Go ahead, shout it out if you know. Edison, right. So if you live around the church here, or really anywhere in Anago, you're probably familiar with the street project going on in the city of Anago. So this project has its ups and downs, if you've been paying attention. You know, and I, uh, I'm familiar with this because, hey, I have to cross Edison every time I come to peace, every day, you know, a couple times. And for a while there, at the beginning of summer, I would forget. And I'd drive down 7th Avenue to get to peace, and then I'd have to turn around or go down some other street and figure my way around to finally get here. Um, finally, I kind of caught on. But this project was delayed. You know, there was rain first half of the summer was very rainy, and you'd look down Edison Street like, oh, wow, there's a lot of water down that street. wonder how that project's going. That, I'm sure, was delayed because of that. And then finally, we have this nice weather lately, you know, and they're, they're to this point. I took this picture yesterday, by the way. So we're finally looking like, oh, this is looking like a street again. This is great news. You know, and I thought this was kind of a, a good example of what our faith life is like. You know, our faith life as it's described in the Bible, has its ups and downs. You know, in fact, the Apostle Paul describes our faith sometimes as being weak and sometimes as being strong. Or he uses terms like strengthening our faith, growing in our faith, growing in our understanding of God. 
Growing in our living out of our faith daily. Growing in our works of righteousness in this world. Even Jesus talked about that, right? If you think about the way Jesus described faith. He said things like, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move, and it'll move. Now, I can't guarantee that at the end of the 40-day bean challenge, you'll be able to do that. Okay? That's up to God, right? If he wants you to move a mountain because of your faith, he'll do that. But it's an example that Jesus said that our faith does grow. It, it, I mean, it's a gift of God, but from that point on, God has given us tools and abilities and things like hearing his word and receiving his sacrament, worshiping and, and prayer and all those things we're going to be looking at these next six weeks to help grow in that faith. But I will tell you this. It's not going to be a finished product, really, until we get to heaven, right? Then it's, everything's going to be perfect. Living out our relationship to God and our relationship to others, well, in the new creation, that's all going to be fantastic, and it's going to be perfect. In the meantime, it's a work in progress, just like Edison Street. Hopefully, by the way, this will be finished soon. <laughs> all right? Still won't be perfect, though, right? Won't be perfect. And neither is the living out of our faith. But we give thanks to God. He's given us these fantastic tools, these targets to shoot for as we grow in our relationship to Him. And I hope you're looking forward to that as much as I am. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.